All right, real quick, Mike Albano, um, long, long background in uh, higher ed, did some work for a service provider, and now I'm with the uh, enterprise side uh, at Google. Um, so I'm here to talk about open config. What is it? What does it mean to Wi-Fi? Um, so because of the name, I've found it helps to describe really quick what it's not. It's not white box APs. It's not an SDWM play. Um, it's not an attempt to alleviate the controller versus controllerless architectures and all of that. It has nothing to do with that. Um, and it's also not here to, to eliminate the need to use um, prime infrastructure or AMP or I'm sure there's a lot of people in the crowd that, that love those tools. Um, those, those can stay. Um, so what is it? What is open config? <coughs> Quite simply, it's, it's, it's an operator-driven API. So it's, a, it's an attempt to unify the API. So this is, when I say operator-driven, this is network engineers. This is, it's, it's basically an open source initiative. It is not, uh, you know, there's no copyright. It's not owned by one individual or one company. It's, uh, it's comprised of network engineers. Um, <clears throat> and what is it doing? Well, right there, it's, it's aimed at improving the management plane, um, the way that we interact with network elements. In our case, it's APs and controllers, right? <clears throat> so what does it mean? What does this operator-driven API mean? Um, well, like I said, it's a collaboration of, of network engineers. And uh, we're, all, we're all after, for the most part, the same thing. So. Um, it's informal, um, it's, it's operator driven in that there's, vendors don't, don't dictate what makes it into an open config model. I'll get into what a, an open config model actually is in a bit, but just think about it from the point of view of how do you configure a network element and how do you get data out of a network element. Um, what we want out of those network elements, out of APs, out of telemetry, for, or what do we want to configure, that's, that's what we come to a consensus on, right? Um, so that's, that's what it means to be operator driven. Um, okay, animations, yay. All right, so <clears throat> the evolution of how we interact with network elements. So back when we first started to, uh, to walk um, upright, we came up with this thing that was sort of a really bad version of Bash, and it's the CLI. Right? This is how we interact with network elements. We log into controllers or APs and we configure them the way we want. Um, and then shortly after that came SNMP to do the same thing, configure, get data out of network elements. Um, not gonna go into all of the issues of, you know, the scaling issues and the problems of the CLI and SNMP. That's been getting complained about for the past 15 years. Um, then we have the, you know, sort of the, the current way of doing it, right? Or the state of the art, if you want to call it. And APIs, everything's API, API, API driven. Um, so the problem we see with APIs is that, so ev once everybody gets a REST API or what have you, XML, JSON blobs, that's great, but three years from now or five years from now, we've essentially, we're faced with that same problem of one vendor's implementation is going to look different than another vendor's implementation. So we've sort of just swapped out one CLI problem for another. Um, so <clears throat> I don't have a lot of time, but I do want to touch on one and two and you know, why that's a problem. Why are we try what are we trying to solve? Um, so you may have heard this, I'll, I'll call it a myth, um, that you, you align a vendor to a use case. Who, who's ever been asked, like, hey, which Wi-Fi vendor are you going to deploy for a network? I know I get that question a lot, right? Um, so there's, I, call it a, I call it a myth of, well, I'm going to pick the vendor that has the best value add for a particular use case, right? That's probably heard people say things like that. In my experience, that's actually not true. It's more about, well, who are you using today? What vendor are you comfort? What's your comfort level with your existing vendor today? That's who gets used, right? So the reason why one and two are, are a problem is because you, I would really love to be able to pick the vendor that, oh, there's sleep mode. I would really love to pick a vendor based on their capabilities and their performance, right? I would love to do exactly what I said before, align a vendor to a use case. But there's so many 
like thousands of hours in scripts and tooling and, and engineering time based on knowing a particular vendor's implementation, right? Your tools are written around it. Um, your operations teams are familiar with a certain vendor. That's what locks you into a vendor. It's not that, well, they're the best at what they do, right? There's plenty of arguments about which Wi-Fi vendor is the best you know, at serving, serving Wi-Fi. But it's, it's more, the problem is that it's more about the existing tools than it is about picking a, a vendor to match a use case. Um, so the end goal is that an API will look the same amongst multiple vendors, amongst all vendors. Right? We, we as operators come up with what we want that API to look like. What kind of, what kind of data do you want to get out of, a, out of a system? What kind of radio stats do you want to see out of a system? And what do you want to be able to configure on that system? That, is, that appears the same regardless of vendor implementation. That, that's the end goal. Right? That's what OpenConfig is after. Um, all right, so here's a real quick example of um, like what is this, what, what actually are you talking about with this open config thing and Yang models and all that. So on, on the right side you see a box that's an actual Yang model and what, what it looks like. Um, so in this example I'm using, I'm, there's this notion of subscribers and publishers in this streaming telemetry world. Um, and I think the real easy thing for people to grasp is radio data. Like, Give me the retries, or give me the channel utilization. Um, like that's that's sort of obvious that what we could do with that data, right? It's it's easy to, to theorize what you would do with all these all the client data or the APs data. But what's not so obvious, but I think is just as important, is being able to, to in order to act on that data, I also need to be able to respond to it and automatically configure the network elements. So in this example, this is actually a me subscribing to configuration, right? So I've configured a channel on an AP, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that AP is operating on that channel. So I'm subscribing to the configuration of the channel, right? So here we have an example where a DFS hit occurs, and now the, the channels change. If that's happening a lot over time, you may want to have the system automatically prune those channels, prune those DFS channels from the channel plan. Um, so I do this today with like I said before, scripts, monitoring syslog, looking at traps, trying to respond to that with an SNMP write or a CLI push. Um, it's not that this is impossible today, it's just that all of my tools have to be built around a particular vendor. I can't, do, I can't write one tool and have it operate on multiple vendors, right? So onboarding, if you take that, what I just said, and multiply it by like a thousand, that's the difficulty with onboarding new vendors. I have to redo all of that stuff. Um, so here are examples of what I mean by streaming telemetry. Um, what I'm here, what I'm, one of my goals of this, of this conference is actually to get feedback from you all on what do you want to see from a system, right? What, do you, what kind of radio data do you need in order to make better decisions about configuring the, the network? Um, so I've come up with a sample model already of, you know, based on experience, here's what I would like to see. I've, I've spoken to some uh, other people, some of them in this crowd, about what kind of data they want to see from a system. And, you know, it's, it's at the end of the day, as special as we think all our networks are, we are configuring and we're looking to get pretty much the same thing from, from most systems. Um, we may design them entirely different, but the, the actual config, I mean, transit power is transit power, data rates are data rates. Right? There's a BSS, yeah, and there's, a, there's an ESS, and there's a channel width. Like, that, that's, that's the same, regardless of vendor. <clears throat> um, here's a, another slide on, I have 40 seconds left. Examples of config. Um, like I said, it's, this is, there's a lot of overlap, and I've, I've been in a number of environments, and what we're trying to configure is, is, is really similar. Um, all right, so, Obviously, not every vendor implements everything the same. That's fine. There's room for deviations and extensions. RRM is a big one that comes to mind, right? Sure, every vendor has a different RRM, but they all pretty much do dynamic channel assignment, and all of them pretty much have this notion of an allowed set of channels that they can select from, right? So even within RRM, there's room to model that exactly the same amongst all vendors. Um, and there's also room for special knobs like CCA modification and all of those uh, vendor specific things. Um, 
So there's no, there's no notion of like a vendor can't do this because they have a different way of doing things. There's an allocation for that. I am out of time. Um, yeah, there, I, there's some risks that this could turn into the next version of SNMP and there's mitigation factors for all that. But really what I want to get to um, is my last point is right, this is open, this is on GitHub, this is operator driven, so please, I want, I want to hear from you, please email me, Twitter, come up to me at the conference. Right now this is still at the discovery stage for me uh, and for us, like this is the time for us to set what we want to see in these, in these models. To, what we want to configure on a system and what kind of telemetry we want out of it. So please approach me about this. Um, that's it. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thanks.